All right, so starting now. All right, so this is um, January 2019, question number two. <clears throat> we're doing algebra questions. And in this question, we're, to, we're asked to make X the subject of the formula. Right now, Y is the subject of the formula. So when a letter is the subject of the formula, you must have the, that letter by itself on one side of the equation. Its coefficient must be positive one, and its power must also be positive one. So in other words, I need to get x by itself. That's not very difficult to do. So let's start by trying to isolate x. The first thing, um, anything that doesn't have it have in x, get everything with x on one side, and everything that doesn't have in x on the other side. So I'm going to have y minus 3p is equal to x over 5. So positive 3p goes over and become negative. All right. Then I'm going to put this over 1. Then I'm going to say, if I have one fraction is equal to one fraction, what do I do? Cross multiply. So let's cross multiply. So it's 1 times x is x is equal to 5 times y minus 3p. That is your answer. x is um, 5 into y minus 3p. Did anybody get this correct? And for some reason, I don't like the penmanship. So I have y minus 3p is equal to x over 5. I'm going to put this over 1. Then I'm going to cross multiply. x is equal to 5 minus y minus 3p. All right. Um, let's go to um, AII. AII says solve the following equation by factorization. All right, um, it has been a while since I've seen the examiner do this, where he's telling you to solve it and he's telling you specifically what to use to solve it. All right, so this, of course, is a quadratic equation. Um, 2x squared minus 9x is equal to 0. Um, I, obviously, I could use either the method of factorization or using the quadratic formula. But we are being told specifically here to solve by factorization. All right, this is, a easy, this is very easy to factorize. All right, first of all, the first step in all factorization is to see if there is a common factor. So the thing that is common to 2x squared and 9x is x. So I'm going to put x outside the bracket. Then I'm going to say x into 2x squared is 2x minus x into 9x is 9. And this is equal to 0. Now, if I'm multiplying two things and I'm getting zero, if I'm multiplying two things and I'm getting zero, it is either the first that is equal to zero or the second, which is 2x minus 9, that is equal to zero. So minus 9 goes over and becomes positive. So I have 2x is equal to 9. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So therefore, I'm going to get x is equal to 0, or x is equal to 9 over 2. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you solve a quadratic equation, you must get two answers. Whenever you solve a quadratic equation, you must get two answers. All right, let's move on to the next part of the question. All right, here we're told a farmer um, wishes to enclose a rectangular plot with a wire fence. The width of the plot is three um, meters less than its length. The width of the plot is three meters less than its length. Given that the area enclosed by the fence is um, 378 um, meters square, show that. All right, so 
First of all, we have a rectangular plot and the length is equal to L. We're told that the width is what? Three meters less than the length. It means that the width would be L minus three. Now, area would be equal to length multiplied by width. So the length is what? L um, into L, sorry. So fund of X. L into L, L multiplied by L minus three. This will give you the area. We're also told that the area is equal to 376. So therefore, the area, which is L into L minus three is equal to 378, not 76, 78. Next, I'm going to remove the bracket by applying distributive law. Distributive law says whatever is inside the bracket is multiplied by what is immediately outside the bracket. So L times L is L squared minus L times 3 is 3L. And positive 378 comes over and becomes minus 378. And this is equal to zero. All right, so we're not asked to solve it. We're asked to just show that L squared minus 3L is equal to, um, sorry, L squared minus 3L minus 378 is equal to zero, which we just did. All right, I don't think there's anything else on this page. So let's go to the next page. All right, this is a question on variation. Um, now, variation um, in recent years has become another popular topic. So um, I'm asking you to ensure that you review this topic. It says, the force F applied by an object is directly proportional to its extension E um, produced by the object. So let me read it again. The force F applied to an object is directly proportional to the extension E produced by that object. Represent this information as an equation in terms of F, E, and the appropriate constant K. Now, everybody should know that a variation question has a four-step flow to it. Step one, um, the examiner is going to make a variation statement. And the variation statement is going to have one of two operative words. The two operative words are directly or what? Inversely. Now, if um, once the examiner makes this variation statement, you, the student, will have to then what? Represent this variation statement as a variation equation. Now, if the word used is directly, it's K multiplied by. And if the word used is inversely, it's K divided by. So in I, we're being asked to represent the information as a variation equation. Here, F is going to be equal to K multiplied by E. So that is the answer here. For one mark, F is equal to K multiplied by E. This is the variation equation for the variation statement that F is directly proportional to the extension E. I, I, next we are told. Um, the incomplete table below shows corresponding values of F and E. Using the equation in CI or otherwise, determine the values, the value of X and Y. All right, so remember I was telling you that there's a four step flow to our variation question. Step one, the examiner makes a variation statement and you, the student, must write this as a variation equation. We have already done that. So this is step one. F is equal to K multiplied by E. Step two, 
you're going to be given a value of X and Y so that you can calculate K. Now, there are two such values you could use. You could use, um, you could use, you could use 8 and 0 0.5, 0 0.2 or 60 and 1.5. Um, anyone that makes it that's comfortable to you, both of them should result in the same answer. So I'm going to say when x, sorry, not x, when um, e is equal to um, 1.5. F is equal to 60. So let's put this in. I'm going to get what? Um, F is equal, sorry, F, which is 60. Sixty is equal to K multiplied by 1.5. Um, I'm going to divide both sides by 1.5. And I'm going to get K is equal to, I think it's 40. Well, let me double check. K is equal to 40. So therefore, my equation is F is equal to 40 E. F is equal to K multiplied by E, but K is what, 40? So F is equal to 40 E. So step two says you'll be given a value of X and what, um, a value of what, um, E and F so that you can find K. Now, step three says rewrite this equation and put in the value of K. So which we just did. So the equation is F is equal to K E, but K is equal to 40. So we write F is equal to 40 E. And the last step says, you're either going to be given a value of X, sorry, a value of E to find F, or a value of what? F to find E. So here I'm gonna say, when E is equal to X, F is equal to 25. So let's push, put this in. We have 25 is equal to 40 times X times E, which is X. Then I divide both sides by 40. So X would be equal to 25 divided by 40, which is five over eight. All right, since everything is in decimal, Let's write the answer as a decimal. So X is equal to 0 0.625. And then lastly, using the same equation, all right, we have much space for it, but we'll find space. We have F is equal to 40 E. And I'm gonna say when, Um, X, when E, sorry, is equal to 3.2, um, F is equal to Y. So I'm gonna put Y is equal to 40 multiplied by 3.2, Y is equal to, so this is 40 multiplied by 3.2, so, y is equal to 128, all right? So this is the first question for the day. Um, I hope that as the day progress, um, your memory becomes sharper and you will respond, um, respond very well to the questions. All right, so let's get ready for the second question.